Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Moberg, and with us, of course, in the green room is your amazing co-host, Bobby Parrish. And um, if you are an adult survivor of childhood abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse, we show up here every week. We do a live Q&A, we answer your questions, and we have a specific topic every single week, and this week's topic is multimedia, meaning movies, podcasts, and videos that support our recovery journey from childhood abuse. So last week, um, if you joined us uh, every Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on Roku TV and YouTube, as well um, as Twitter, this is a live interactive Q&A broadcast with um, all of your questions being tweeted in from Twitter, and then Bobby and myself answer your questions, and um, soon we'll be having, um, you know, welcoming questions from Facebook, and we'll just, it, it, it's it's very multimedia, which is kind of neat because this week's topic is multimedia. We have people that message us, they email us, they they DM us on Twitter, they send us private Facebook messages, they message us on our Facebook walls, um, all different types of media, email, um, asking us questions about their recovery journey uh, that they're on right now from being abused as children and here they are adults and they're trying to recover. So that is sort of in a nutshell what it is that we're doing. I'm Athena Moberg, this is Bobby Parrish, we're trauma recovery coaches and we're survivors. We both are adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. We have our YouTube channel and our Roku TV channel with over 100 hours of video to support you in your recovery journey and that is why we show up every single week. You are the reason why we show up every single week. We are so excited that you've joined us for this discussion tonight. Head on over to Twitter if you're tuning in live and if you're not live then you can, if you're here on a replay, you can go down in the a description section of this video at the very bottom before comments and you can click on the number and it'll just go ahead and fast forward you to our weekly one page downloadable resource which is sort of a blog post of sorts and it's a one page compact version of everything that we discuss here on the video and it's free just for you for being a loyal listener viewer subscriber just an awesome survivor on your recovery journey toward wholeness after being abused as a child. So that's just a thank you. If you are tuning in on a podcast and you are not on our YouTube channel or our Roku TV channel or over on our website, which is traumarecoveryuniversity.com or nomoreshameproject.com, then we invite you to go to one of those places. This is a video broadcast. While you may be listening to just an audio version of this, um, if it feels a little disjointed because you're not seeing us or you would like to tune in and join us live, then please join our lively, awesome, wonderful, supportive recovery community, um, survivor community, and just come say hello. Let us know where you found us and we will gladly welcome you in. We are so happy that you're here. And again, just as a thank you, we want to give you free access to our downloadable one-page resource. Go ahead and download tonight's resource as well as any of them. Um, we have almost 100 of them, I believe, or maybe over 100 at this point. And you can get complimentary access just by going to one of our websites, nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com. Click on the tab that says downloadables and you'll be given immediate access to the whole library of downloadable resources that you can use on several or 100 different topics to help you in your recovery journey from child abuse. So. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to my amazing partner, Bobby Parrish, and I will go ahead and take over the Twitter feed for you, Miss Bobby, while you um, take care of our public service announcements. Take it away, Bobby. <laughs> Okay. okay. Hi, everybody. It's always it's so always wonderful, wonderful to see you here on Monday evening. evening. Um, it's great to see you gathering on the Twitter stream before we even start and welcoming each other. 
um, we are so happy that you're here and we're so honored that you would spend an hour of your week with us every week. Um, I want to issue a trigger warning for tonight's broadcast. This is a broadcast Twitter chat podcast that talks about childhood abuse. So we ask that you please practice excellent self-care while you're watching or listening. Um, if you do get triggered, go ahead and shut things down and come back to them later. Um, the videos, the podcasts will always be here. We have no intention of ever taking them down. So you can always come back to it later and listen. If you start listening to this and it just doesn't make sense as something that fits into your recovery, that's okay. Again, you can go ahead and shut it down and, and walk away and find something else on the channel that looks good to you. Um, like Athena said, I think we have more than 100 topics covered now. So um, surely there's something that will be helpful to you. If you are in crisis or you need help urgently, we want to provide you with some crisis information and some contact numbers. If you're here in the US or you're in Canada, we ask that you please reach out to RAIN, and that is the Rape Abuse Incest National Network, and they are available at 1-800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E. They also have a 24-hour crisis chat feature on their website, RAIN.org, R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. If you are in the UK, you can reach out to the Samaritans. The Samaritans have a crisis hotline as well, and that is at 116123. They can also be reached via email, and you should email joe, J-O, at samaritans.org. You can also text the Samaritans, and the number to text is 0775-90-90. 90. If you are in Australia, where we have a growing community of um, family members, we would like to provide you with a crisis hotline number. And your national crisis hotline number is 131114. And as we get growing numbers of people in different communities and countries around the world, we'll continue to provide you with crisis numbers for those particular countries. We do ask if you're in crisis right now that you please seek help with one of the agencies we've just talked to or with another resource other than asking for help on the Twitter stream, on the chat stream under the hashtag no more shame because it triggers other people watching the broadcast and following the Twitter stream. We do want you to get help we just want to make the Twitter chat as safe as possible for everyone. So we really appreciate if you'll do that. And tonight my earbuds won't stay in. Um, oh, no. uh, I was like, I have to put some duct tape around my head. I, know. I wanted to get you new, um, new, no duct tape for you. I wanted to get you some new ones, um, like the ones you used to have that didn't, that don't do the little like thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we need to do that's what we need to do yeah amazon.com to the rescue <laughs> but we're so grateful that all of you are here this evening and as athena said we're going to talk about multimedia that is helpful to you in your recovery last week we talked about books this week we're talking about multimedia um, video uh, movies television programs and podcasts because they are becoming very popular as well and they have some excellent information. Um, like books, the reason that we want to present this information is that a lot of it provides education on what trauma is and how it helps us, how we can understand it. Ooh, trauma doesn't help us. Bad typo there, bad typo of my mouth. No, <laughs> it provides us information with what trauma is and how we can recover from it. There you go. Something else that videos and movies do for me, and I'm hoping will do for you, is they show you that you're not alone. When we grow up being abused, we already feel like we're different from everybody else because it's like, well, you know, why don't their parents do that? Why is my house this horrible place where everybody screams and shouts and throw things? Why is my house 
the only house where dad comes into the bedroom at the middle of the night. Um, and so already you feel like you don't belong and you're not like everybody else. And then the shame from the abuse gets piled on by your abuser through the grooming process. And you feel even more isolated and you might choose to isolate even more because of the shame. I'll turn my ringer off. Sorry, it's me. I know I'm tweeting you, even though you're right in front of me. I'm, you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and and sometimes because of our abuse or our PTSD, we might choose to isolate because it's easier to be on our own than it is to be with other people. It feels safer. And it is not, there's not so much of a sensory overload that we can get if we have PTSD. But we need to know that we're not alone. We need to know there are other people out there who have gone through something like what we've gone through. Nobody's ever gone through the same circumstances you have. And we certainly are not here to judge whose circumstances were worse. Um, bad circumstances are bad circumstances. And we want you to know that you're not alone. That there are people out here who have suffered through terrible things, who are struggling to find hope in this world, struggling to recover, dealing with PTSD, depression, anxiety, um, agoraphobia, addictions, any number of things that are after effects of the trauma. And so we're hoping that by watching some of these movies or checking out some of these podcasts or videos that you realize that you do belong, that there is a whole community out here of thousands of us. Athena and I have, I think, just shy of 20,000 people in our combined communities um, already. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of the numbers of people who have experienced abuse as children. So we're hoping, <laughs> I need super glue. Um, we're hoping that as you go through the list with us tonight and look at the different movies, that you might be able to see a chance that there are people out there who have gone through what you've gone through and you can tap into them for support. At the end of the broadcast, we're going to talk about ways that you can join in safe community with our community that we've already established. Um, we have Twitter chats, we have Facebook support groups. So we'll talk about all of that at the end of the broadcast. And if you're alive with us right now, I invite you to jump on Twitter and using the hashtag no more shame, um, do a search on Twitter and you'll find that there's a group already out there of people who are tweeting into us with questions, they're greeting one another, they're sharing kindness and encouragement, and you can be a part of that. And so more than anything tonight, you know, we work really hard, Athena and I, to provide you with education for trauma recovery. Hey, Bobby. Because, uh -huh. I'm sorry, you said because. I just said, because we didn't get that. No, we so did that's it. one of the huge goals that Athena and I have. So um, we're hoping that aside from everything that we do, that when we provide you with other resources, that you feel not so alone. So what you got there, Athena? <laughs> I wanted to tag on what you just said, though, because I was talking to a client today and I was sharing exactly what you just said. Um, she said, how long do you think it's going to take me before I feel better? And I said, well, there's, I don't really know the answer to that. But one thing I do know is that it's going to be, it's going to take less time, less time likely than it's taken Bobby or myself, because between the two of us, we have about 30 years of recovery. I've been working on my recovery journey at different levels of intensity since about the year 2000. And I know so that's 16 years, but the last few years have been more like grr, like, you know, the last 10 years have been a little bit more grr off and on, but the last two to three years, like straight, like I'm plowing through this. There's nothing that's going to stop me. I'm going to heal if it's the last thing I do. Right. Right. So, 
yeah, so I just wanted to tag on what you were saying about that. But um, I had a couple of comments about movies that I wanted Ooh, to share okay. with you. Um, I have this weird hair that's like stuck in my headphones, sorry. Okay. Um, I think August, all your hair is stuck in your head. It In my headphones, like, <laughs> there, it's like I have this weird, like, like, I feel like there's one hair that's like trying to be pulled out and it hasn't, anyway, sorry. So August says, <laughs> I have too much hair. So August says, I love movies about teens who are struggling with something and then they get sent away to like a rehab center and then their whole world changes. And I have to say, I agree. There were a couple of movies like after school type movies that I saw when I was um, a young girl. And I always felt so encouraged by those movies because I was thinking the whole time, wow, like their parents must really care about them if they're helping them to go away and go, go to rehab centers. And you guys have heard Bobby and I talk about this before. But when I was raising my son, this is probably back in 2008, you guys, I remember being in a state of my recovery where I was having some breakthroughs and I felt like I was going to have a little bit of a mental breakdown, maybe a lot of a mental breakdown, but I hadn't had it yet because I, who has time for a mental breakdown when you're raising a teenager by yourself? This is no joke. Bobby knows this and I've told you guys before. I called the number in the back of a book of the Love is a Choice book by Minerth and Meyer, which is on our list from last week. Um, we have uh, Maggie and Jack are working really hard behind the scenes helping to compile a list of books. And then we have um, other resources or whatever, and we're going to be getting an, an ebook put out there as a fundraiser for our conference coming up. So that's being compiled. But anyway, Minerth and Meyer, Love is a Choice. There's a number in the back of the book, and it's a, a trauma center. Because I remember saying all the time, I wish I was like addicted to drugs or something because then I could at least go to rehab and then I would be able to like go and heal, go somewhere and heal at a center. This is like my thinking. Honestly, I was 30 something years old thinking the only way I was ever going to be able to go away and heal is if I went away to like a center, but I wasn't addicted to anything. And so... I felt like those people kind of like were lucky and I know that sounds horrible to say and I don't feel that way for reals. It was just where I was at in my mental state, you guys. And so I called the number and explained to them, like, are you the, the trauma center mentioned in the back of this book? Yes, we are. Um, so you help people that were in like traumatic situations and they need to, they have to go through emotional healing. Yes, we do. Can I please ask your prices and how long in advance do you need for me to reserve ahead of time? Because like in 2010, my son's graduating high school and then I really think I need to come, but I want to be able to save up money. I need to know how much to save up. I have two years to save. So how much is it going to be? And the girl on the phone was like, are you being serious right now? She didn't believe me. I said, I said yes, I'm serious. I'm calling the number in the back. Is this, are, are you a counselor? And she said, yes, I am. Either you're a really good actress or I just, I, I'd never heard somebody call and ask me these questions before. Like, are you really wanting to make an appointment for two years from now? Yes. And why can't you come now? Because I'm raising my son by myself. I have a teenager that I'm raising by myself. How are, and you've been through what? And I started sharing my story with her and she's like, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to have to have my manager call you back. Like, she had no clue how to ask, how to answer my questions, you guys. This is real. You are going through the hardest thing you will ever, ever go through right now. Recovering, like you thought the abuse was bad, and it was. It was horrific and horrible and terrible. But recalling it and feeling all the feels and pushing through the pain so that you can get on the other side of the pain so you can finally recover, that's the hard part, you guys. And so who rewind all the way back to August, who said she loves these movies of the teenagers that are going to rehab and all of that. All I was thinking when I was a kid was, wow, those kids are lucky that they have parents that care enough about them that they would call a rehab center to, to send their child to rehab so that they could get better, so that they could heal. And I couldn't fathom that. Like, no one gave a crap about me. Like, it, they just didn't. I mean, I'm sure my dad did at the time, but like... 
I don't know. And I'm sure maybe my mom did, but there's just no way. Like, you can't really know if you're cared about or not because there's so much abuse going on and then so much enabling going on. And looking back on it, like, they say they cared, but, like, that's not how you treat people you care about. So the parents in those movies that August is talking about, those after-school movies or those lifetime movies or the after-school specials and all of that, like, that's – that's some love right there. That's a deep level of love. When you love someone enough to call a trauma center to have that sort of intervention. If you ever watch that show, Intervention, love that show. I didn't put that on the multimedia list, but I love watching Intervention, you guys. It is healing to watch Intervention. It's triggering, but it's healing. And to know that that person is loved so much that you're going out of your way to make sure they get the best possible care, that's amazing. And then there was... Um, another one, Bobby, that was August. And then um, Simi said for movies, she loves the movie called The Pursuit of Happiness. It's an awesome movie about a man who manages to claw his way up from homelessness. And I love that movie, Simi. Oh, my goodness. Bobby, what are some of your favorite movies? Because we missed you, missed you, missed you during chat this morning. I know, I know. I got told Matt I got sucked into a vortex of... A clients needing help. Um, yes, I'm glad you're out of that vortex too. I'm just very glad. Out. Yes, I wasn't going to um, handle this one tonight on my own. I would have had to like let everybody know that I, I needed a bye week and I'd be back next week. You know, I want to point out a comment that some people are saying, and like I'm responding right now to Kalisha. She talked about how sometimes um, videos are very triggering for her. And she said that videos are the most triggering, and she lists podcasts as the least triggering. And I have to agree. There are times in my recovery that I just cannot watch some movies. I just can't. It's, it, I know myself well enough to know that my frame of thought is not in the place where it needs to be fed by a story that is triggering or emotional for me. In fact, there are times, um, still sometimes, that the only thing I can watch on TV is the home and garden television show because it has no emotions. <laughs> They're just showing me how to remodel my kitchen. Um, and that's just the reality of recovery. You know, we, we're in different times when you see things with your eyes, you hear things with your ears, it can magnify the triggers. So I would really want to validate people who are struggling to watch a video or to watch a movie um, and honor that for yourself. There'll be times when you can watch them later. Uh, it doesn't have to be right now. Um, skip to looking at the podcasts. We have a lovely selection of videos that Athena gave me that are all TED Talks. And they are a little bit of people talking about their personal experience. But a lot of them are more largely based on the effects of trauma on our brains and our bodies and how we can heal. Um, those I can pretty much always do. But if it's something like the color purple, um, that movie will set my tailspin detailing really quick because of what she goes through, um, the abuse that she goes through in the beginning of the movie. Um, so I really want to validate people who say that videos and movies can be triggering. Yes. So take care of yourself. Don't watch them when you're not in a good place. And when you're in a good place, and you don't want to think about things like that, it's okay not to watch them then too. Um, this is your recovery. You know what's best for you. We trust that. And Athena and I will always be one to stand up and say, you, you know what you need. Sometimes we take a little bit to recognize what we need and to trust ourselves that that's we know That's the what hardest we need. part. I think that's the hardest part for so many survivors, you guys, is um, yes. what Bobby just said. Learning, I think, I think across the board, every single one of my clients, almost every single one of my clients asks me, when am I going to be able to trust myself? I, I just don't trust myself. And my answer is the same almost every time. And Bobby will probably echo this answer. You will learn to trust yourself as you 
learn because the way you trust yourself is through your intuition. Your intuition has been damaged. The way you heal, the reason your intuition is damaged is because of gaslighting and grooming. What, the way you heal your intuition is through congruence. The way you become congruent with yourself is through healthy boundaries. The way you establish and maintain healthy boundaries is by learning what boundaries are, putting them into play, and guarding them. So it is a multifaceted thing, just like how we tell you. It's never wave a wand, one and done in recovery. It's often many, 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 many steps towards progress and towards recovery and towards success. But the way you learn to trust yourself, which is one of the hardest parts of recovery, learning to trust yourself is hard. I feel like I'm going to sneeze, you guys. If I do, I'm so sorry because it's going to be really loud. Um, so cover your ears. I'm sorry. I mean, don't cover your ears. I'll let you know, I think. Oh, no. Okay. But yeah, the way you heal your intuition, the way you learn to trust yourself is by trusting your intuition. The way you heal your intuition, which has been damaged, is through congruence. The way you become congruent is through making healthy choices. The way you make healthy choices and healthy relationships is through having healthy boundaries. How do you have healthy boundaries? You learn what they are, you put them into play, and you guard them. I hope you wrote that down. I said it all twice. But that is, it's multifaceted, but you guys, Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. It start, that's how you reverse engineer your goal. Your goal is to trust yourself and to feel better. How do you learn to trust yourself and feel better? And it's exactly what I just said. Through trusting your intuition, which was ruined and, and damaged through your grooming and through your gaslighting that happened in your family of origin or from your abuser when you were a child. Um, it's different if you are watching this channel because you were abused only in adulthood and there's no child abuse involved. It's totally different. Um, learning to trust yourself as an adult who was abused as an adult who was not abused as a child is way easier. It's a shorter process. But when you are healing years and years and years and years and decades of compound damage that's been done because you've not been able to trust yourself or trust your intuition for, for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, it, you have to you have to almost relearn everything you have to relearn life skills specifically life skills surrounding healthy relationships and what does a toxic relationship look like and what does a healthy relationship look like and how do we choose healthy relationships over toxic relationships Bobby your comments on that I Simi was saying we need to put America's test kitchen along with HGTV on the list of channels to watch that have no emotion. <laughs> yes, our, I, the one I like that has that, that is easy for me to watch that, that is right along lines with HGTV and, and the test kitchen uh -huh. is the one where they, um, they uh, the realtors, there's three different realtors. Oh, yes. And, Million and, Dollar Homes New York or something like yes, that? Yes, that one where they, they all like, and they're going up against one another and they're like trying to sell these people's homes and they're like gonna lose the client and then they have to find the buyer and then they're having these open houses and, and like it's just, and it's a little bit of drama but it's so low on the drama scale compared to what you're dealing with as a survivor that you're like, you get totally sucked in and you're like, it felt really good to be a realtor in New York selling million dollar homes for 30 minutes. Like, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for that healing, for that healing recovery 30 minutes that you gave me that I didn't have to deal with real life. <laughs> and people, people are talking about um, inside out that new, that's um, Pixar. I think Pixar movies, newest movie, when it, and it talks about emotional intelligence. I have it's all not, about. I have not seen that one yet, but I am looking. Good one. What is it called? Inside Out. We need to add that mm -hmm. to the list. I, it's I, animated. I love animated, though. I think animated like helps us heal our inner child a little bit, and no, a lot I, of like inner inner child work is a touchy subject. Not everybody believes in it. But you guys, inner child work is real if you're an adult survivor of child abuse, especially childhood sexual abuse. There's a new movie, Bobby, a new Pixar movie as well um, called Finding Dory. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited because I loved Finding Nemo. <laughs> is it Finding Dory? I think it's Finding Dory. I think so. I'm yeah. Not sure. Anyway, I love Ellen DeGeneres so much. Like, love her. And... 
of course she's the voice of Dory. And she's, it's just, it is a cartoon so you can bring your kids, but 100% of the humor and the inside jokes are all for you, parents, all for you, not for your kids. Kind of like Toy Story. That was something big that came out, I think, like one of the, one of the biggest, coolest things that happened when, when I was raising my son is that I got to go take him to Toy Story and I felt like it was more for me than it was for him because the humor was very like all inside jokes that only I would get, but it wasn't inappropriate for him to hear. You know, yes. are you a toy? Are you a toy story fan, Bobby? I loved it. Yes. Yes. I think, um, the first one's my favorite. Yeah, me too. The other ones, it was kind of hard for me to jump on the bandwagon of all the other ones and then Jesse and all that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but people are talking about movies that um, were kind of spark their inner child and make them happy. Um, Sarah mentioned uh, Tom Hanks in Big. Do you remember that movie? Oh my gosh, that's one. My son and I have watched that no fewer than 20 times. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Breakfast Club. Yeah. Where are all the 80s peeps in the house? High fives. Come on now. 16 candles. Oh, goodness. Any Molly Ringwald movie out there, that is just, it makes me so happy because those were like the highlight of my life at the time. There was, everything else was shit with a capital S. I mean, bad. And so if I could, like, somebody rented something like that or like we got to see something like that. That was amazing, you know, and I never yeah. got to go. I never got to go to theaters, you know, like I never got to go to theaters. Um, but I, I was able to rent movies like at the VHS store. Yeah. Um, but the only two movies I, the only time I went as a child to a movie theater was I went to go see ET with my dad at the Cynodome in Anaheim, California. And I went to a drive-in movie in Riverside, California, and I saw Ghostbusters. That was a very horrible situation. There was like drunk teenagers and alcohol and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I was tagging along with my older step sibling. And yeah, it was not a good situation. But so those are the only two movies I remember seeing like at like the actual, whatever you call it, like theater. Theater, yeah. One, um, like one was an indoor theater, one was a drive-in theater. But, yes. Um, but I do remember the VHS, like having the VHS. Remember Beta? Remember those little Beta movies? The Beta yes. tapes? They, they didn't yes. last very long. No. But, um, but it was kind of cool that they were so little, you know. Um, but, yeah, you guys, any 80s movies. My son loves those 80s movies. He watched all of them with me. The, the um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Breakfast Club. 16 Candles. Um, I'm forgetting one of them. There's more. Um, oh, Nora there's... says Uncle Buck with John Candy. Oh, I loved Uncle Buck. See, you guys, these are movies that, that um, while they might not be focused on your recovery, they minister to your soul. Like, we need movies that minister to our soul, that help us. Sometimes you just need that little bit of, like, like, um, not an escape necessarily, but kind of an escape. Like I'm not talking yeah. about like avoid reality forever, but you guys, there's nothing wrong with avoiding reality for two hours. There's just you nothing know what? wrong with it. I call that distraction. Yeah. Sometimes if you're spinning in a million different directions and your head just wants to go down a nasty rabbit hole so mm -hmm. badly of depression and PTSD, one of the few options you might have left is distraction. And I, I am all for distraction if it prevents your mind from going someplace you don't want to have to chase it. So if you're going to pop in a movie and watch a movie for two hours that makes you laugh and transports you someplace good, go for it. If you're going to pop in three movies and they're going to take you someplace good, as long as you're not like, like, you know, leaving dinner to burn in the oven and the house is burning down or your children don't get picked up from school. Um, but, hey, I'm all for distraction. Sometimes it's the best, the best strategy. So I, 
Um, Bruce Willis, the kid is a good movie and it was almost explaining the inner, the inner child. And I have to say that one of my clients was unable to access her inner child until she saw this movie and everything clicked for her. Like we had been working together for, I don't even know how long we were working together at the time, but she had literally been unable to access her inner child and she was frustrated about this whole topic of like inner child work and like the, the thought of having some sort of wounded inner child that made no sense to her. And then she saw this movie, The Kid, and everything that we had discussed just swirled into being. And she was like, oh my gosh, I finally get it. She had the biggest light bulb moment ever, all because of this movie. So thank you for recommending that, um, Sarah. Um, I'm 15 minutes behind on the Twitter stream, guys. So I'm so, so, so sorry. Um, I did mention something this morning, Bobby, during chat. Ooh, uh -huh. Maggie says, my go-to distraction movies are The Devil Wears Prada, Mean Girls, and The Yellow Submarine. Three excellent choices, Maggie. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Nora. Nora says, stand-up comedian Brian Regan. He, he is so good. He's a clean comedian, but, like, Nora, if you're watching, um, how about the time where, where he's like driving the car and then and someone gives him the pinky and he's like, or they're on the phone on their phone while they're driving and, and, they, and they let him go ahead of him and he gives him the pinky and he talks about the pinky. I mean, it's just little tiny stuff that happens. Like this guy, Brian Regan, you guys Google him. He's hilarious. And I believe he has YouTube videos. He's so, 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 so good. Um, I told somebody something. Um, I told somebody, I w it was Janet. It was Janet this morning, Bobby. Oh, oh did I lose you? Uh -uh, I'm here. Oh, good. Okay. I thought I, I was like, no, this cannot happen tonight. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so this morning I was talking with, um, with, with um, Jeanette. And I was um, telling, I was also talking with Brenda. I have a colleague who is a psychiatrist. And he... Um, occasionally, I mean, all helping professionals have this happen at one point or another if they're in practice long enough, but one of his patients committed suicide. And he was so distraught over it, but he had to keep it together because he was at work. Like, he just, he had to, like, keep it together somehow because he didn't work. He didn't have a private practice. Like, he worked for, like, um, a group of psychiatrists. And he's actually the boyfriend of one of, of one of my dear friends. Anyway, long story short, he says that the way he deals, because my husband asked him, how do you deal when stuff like that happens? He said, my go-to, my go-to thing to how I deal with trauma in my work or, or grieving a loss of a patient or a client when something happens, whether they pass away by suicide or they end up passing away or something happens. And, and, I, and I somehow am shaming myself for feeling responsible because it happens to everybody. He said, I find a movie, I have a few go-tos, but I find a movie that I know will access, help me access all my feelings, all the feels, feel all the feels, feel angry, feel sad, cry, laugh, uh, whatever you do, allow yourself to feel all the feels. Otherwise, you'll stay stuck. You'll show up at work every day terrified that you're going to screw up everybody's life if you're a helping professional and you happen to be watching this video. So, um, so Jeanette said, does that really work? <laughs> and I told her, yeah, like for me, it does at least I have a few go-to movies. If I know that I'm stuffing, cause I was telling, um, we mentioned this several times before Bobby. Um, if you, um, if you run from your pain, you avoid it. If you stuff it or if you numb it, you will never heal. You just won't heal. You will stay stuck. Wherever you're at right now, if you don't feel your feels, if you don't go through the pain, feel the fear, feel the pain, go through it anyway. If you numb it, avoid it, or stuff it, you won't heal. So you got to feel all the feels. Even grief, even just bawling your eyes out for days at a time sometimes. Like you have to feel your feels. Otherwise, you won't, you will stay stuck. So Yes, it really does work, you guys. It really does work 
if you find a movie that always makes you cry and you just know it's going to make you cry, it's just a movie that makes you cry for whatever reason. You don't know what it is or maybe you do know what it is, but it makes you cry. If you find yourself stuffing or you're struggling with rage issues, like you're, you're stuffing to the point that you're raging out and you have displaced anger, which is what I was struggling with um, many, many years ago, like probably 13 years ago with my son, um, you need to access that pain, access those feelings, and then try to find out where they come from. But you, but you sometimes won't be able to know where they come from unless you access them. So a couple of movies that work for me and for everybody it's different. One of them is Castaway. I don't know why, but when he's crying out Wilson and when he goes back and like she, the, the, the gal is married and moved on with her life, but she has all the maps where she searched for him for so many years and she comes running out in the rain and they embrace and they kiss. I mean, I'm just bawling, ugly crying every single time. I can't help it. And Forrest Gump, I wonder if it's a Tom Hanks thing because I love Big also. That's one of my sons and my favorite ones. Anyway, um, but you got to just find sometimes movies, like Bobby said, are a perfect distraction. Other times they serve a purpose. Bobby, what is a movie for you that always, no matter what, causes you to cry? I know you said the color purple, but that's like more of a triggering thing. So no, I don't. I I don't usually do that. I when I'm I'm okay with just crying. <laughs> but what if you can't I'm access with it? What if you can't access your tears? I I can do music like that. But for me to watch a movie that causes me to cry is t more triggering than the crying is helpful. We didn't mention music. It does make sense. We didn't mention music on here, but we did mention podcasts. So I know that you and I talked off the air last week about music that causes us to weep. Now, are you yes. comfortable with sharing with everyone, like like certain music that causes you to cry? Like, are you comfortable sharing that? No pressure. Um, I just put you on the spot. Hello. No, that's okay. Um, two of my go-tos are um, Sinead O'Connor, This Is To Mother You, and it talks about mothering yourself because you didn't have a mother. Makes me just weep. And sounds like Big I'm going to start weeping just hearing you talk yeah. about it. Big and Rich sing a song called Holy Water. And I, can't, I don't know which one it was, Big or Rich, but his sister was raped. And the song talks about um, what she does when all she can do is fall to her knees. And he says, I can see in you the angel that you still are, but she doesn't believe she's has anything angelic left in her body. And so, um, oh yeah, that one just, <laughs> that one makes me weep too. Um, but movies, yeah, I can't do it. It pushes me from the edge of ex crying just to cry to feeling really bad. So I think I'm just, I don't know whether it's I'm too empathic um, but yeah, but it's amazing though. People are saying they're talking about all these movies and I'm just having all these flashbacks to when I was a child. They're talking about Goonies. Um, oh my gosh. I loved Goonies. You guys, I loved Corey <laughs> Feldman's Corey Feldman's monologue during Goonies. He's like, see this wish, see this wish right here. This is my wish. There's something right. or whatever. And oh my gosh, I love that movie, you guys. Or, and I'm or, taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking them all back. That's what he said. That's right. Um, <laughs> and Remember, and Sarah uh, what, mentioned what? Oh, what was the guy's name? He's like Ruth, baby, Ruth. Um the guy oh 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 right 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 Thor? it's not Thor um it's ooh, Ruth baby <laughs> remember with the candy bar I can't, I can, I can but I can't remember remember chunk yeah chunk. Chunk. right um dang it um but what Sarah, Sarah mentioned the movie Goodwill Hunting oh yes she mentioned it during chat this and morning. that that line where the psychologist 
where Robin Williams says it's not your fault. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not your fault. Look, I don't know what's going on. It's not your fault. And he just keeps saying it until Matt Damon Break. loses it. Yeah. Because he knew uh -huh. there was something going on under there. Well, yeah, because yeah. he kept kicking everybody to the curb, like everybody, everybody. He kicked everybody to the curb. And then he had this great, great girl, and he's like, eh, and he's like getting ready to kick her to the curb, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, it's Sloth. Sloth. Ruth, baby. <laughs> sloth. I love Sloth. <laughs> um, oh, oh. Rar, it's Laura. I love you, Laura. Laura says, my escape is Alice in Wonderland. Tim yeah. Burton's version, of course. Tim Burton's version. Um, oh, and Kalisha says, not a movie. It's weird, but I like to lose myself in the TV show, The Killing. I don't think I've ever seen The Killing. I don't know what that is. Kalisha, tell me what that is. And Simi says, um, Equilibrium is an awesome movie. Um, more Tom Hanks movies, The Burbs, The Money Pit, um, Sucker Punch is a strange, strangely quietly comforting, strangely and quietly comforting to me. No one understands why. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. You guys, there's Breakfast Club 16. Weird Science. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Weird science. <laughs> Oh my goodness, The Little Princess and from the 90s. Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. Oh my goodness. What about when Stella got her groove back? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Marley and Me. Oh, any movies about dogs. Oh gosh, any movies about dogs. I lose it. I just yeah. lose it completely. I can't do that one. Oh my goodness. I can't do movies about animals being hurt. I can't, I can't. It's oh way my. too triggering for me. Woo! Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry guys, but this was <laughs> this has been very healing. Or you could tune into Trauma Recovery University's episode on multimedia for an awesome escape from reality for just one hour. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh gosh, you guys. Thank you for the Oh, Steel Magnolias and Rocky. Yes, we talked about all the Rocky movies because they just give you that will to keep on fighting and yes, they're just yes. inspiring. Like the most recent, you guys, the most recent Rocky movie um, titled Creed is so good. Michael J. Jordan, and I forget his co-host, his co-star's name, but she was amazing. She looks like, um, she looks like, um, Lenny Kravitz's daughter. It might be her. I can't remember. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, Creed. Creed is a really good movie. It's on Netflix right now. Um, Kelly Clarkson, Since You've Been Gone. Oh my gosh. That's a, that's a good one. Oh, oh, you guys. Kelly Clarkson did a, a song. This one gets me. One of my clients told me about this. Um, because of you. Um, yeah, Because of You. Kelly Clarkson. It's about her narcissistic mother. Ding, wow. ding, 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 ding. Because of you, I'll never walk um, walk um, near the edge of the sidewalk. Because of you, I'll never, you know, like live my life. Basically, I'll always live in fear and because um, they want us to believe they're protecting us. Oh, hi, Lindy. Lindy's here. You're not late, sweetie. You are right on time. <gasps> the Mighty Ducks. Oh, my gosh. I love that movie, The Mighty Ducks. Emilio Estevez. Hello. Um. Again, Emilio Estevez from um, from um, Breakfast Club. But yes, The Mighty Ducks was a really good movie. Um, Fast Money. Oh, the Fast Money round on Family Feud. <laughs> Dominique said she was trying to play the Fast Money round on Family Feud and she lost track of time. Oh, Parenthood, the TV show. Oh, you all. Oh, oh August says she's never seen Goonies. She's too young, but she'll put it on her list. You guys. Okay, this is a good one, you guys. Um, a TV show for any of you, if you're on this channel, chances are you grew up in a family of origin that may have been dysfunctional. 
And if not, and your abuse happened outside of your family of origin, you can disregard this recommendation. But if you come from a family of origin that is dysfunctional in any way, Arrested Development with Jason Bateman, binge watch every season, and I'll see you in two weeks. Because you will die. It is such real life hilariousness. My son owns like every episode. He thought it was all made up and all make believe. And, and it was just like he had discovered this awesome hidden thing that didn't make any sense to anybody. And that it was just this like cult classic, whatever. Like he, yeah, but it's real. It's like our family, like seriously, but not the family that my, like my son was very sheltered by me. And so he didn't experience family the way I did. But anyway, Arrested Development. Super awesome. Okay, Bobby. Okay. <laughs> Let's move over to the one page. All right. You guys, thank you for participating in all of this. We have so enjoyed hanging out and just going down memory lane and um, being distracted from life while we talk about all the movies that help us in our recovery. So thank you. Thank you for all your contributions. We are compiling a list and an ebook. Yes. And we're going to sell yes. the ebook. We're going to sell the ebook. Um, and raise funds for our conference coming up in November. Yay! Okay, one page time. <laughs> okay. Okay. The top of the page basically summarizes um, what I talked about earlier. That childhood abuse, especially childhood sexual abuse, often leads to a child being different than their peers, like they don't belong. The shame we feel as a result of our abuse leads us to isolate both as a child and into adulthood. With these two factors at play, survivors often feel like they live in a whole different reality than other people. A healthy recovery involves learning to re reconnect with people and developing understanding that we are not alone in what we've suffered. Recovery also involves trauma about education. Knowledge about child abuse, both how it affects us and how we can heal from it is empowering. In fact, we believe education about trauma and recovery are essentials to a survivor's healing. So last week we talked about books. In this one page, we've assembled a list of movies, videos, and podcasts that will help you realize you are not alone and help you to better understand trauma and recovery. So if these are in blue, that means they're links. So if you pull up the PDF, you'll be able to click on it and go straight to that channel on YouTube or down here, the homepage for the podcast. Athena, you might have to step in and help me with some of the TED Talks. I looked oh, at them really okay. quickly but you yeah. might have to help me with those. But let's go really quickly through the movies. Okay, sounds um, great, sounds great. Sleeping with the Enemy, remember that one? Julie Roberts, um, where she leaves a man who's been abusing her. He was, at the very least, narcissistic, if not sociopathic, and tracks her down. Um, and it's about her life trying to hide and trying to get free from him. Monsoon Wedding was one that was recommended on the chat stream this morning um, about a woman who's trying to recover from having been sexually assaulted. Prince of Tides. Um, I will just issue you the hugest trigger warning ever if you're gonna watch this movie, um, but it is about a woman who has had a suicide, she's attempted suicide and she's in um, a psychiatric ward and her brother, Nick Nolte, comes in and meets with a psychiatrist who's played by Barbara Streisand. And they talk through the brother and sister's childhood. And both of them were horrifically abused as children. And Barbara Streisand helps both the sister and the brother to do some recovery work and build a life that they enjoy living. Excellent movie. Um, I like that it reflects the trauma therapy part of the experience, but it is a very, very 
hard one to watch, and there are some graphic scenes. Um, Gaslight. This is an old one. I say, say an oldie but a goodie because it is like the embodiment of the term gaslight. It is about a woman whose husband slowly drives her mad by trying to convince her that the things that she sees and hears are not real. And um, it goes back to that original term, you know, back when the lights in their house were lit by gas and not electricity. And she would see the light flicker and say, did you see that? See what? I didn't see anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's really good. Um, Chosen, an anti-trafficking documentary. I don't know anything about that other than it was um, shown this morning, talked about this morning in chat. Precious, oh my, there's another one that needs a big old trigger warning, but so good um, about a young girl who was horribly abused as a child and is trying to find herself and her identity. Um, I think that um, didn't Gabby, the, the woman who star in this, didn't she win an Oscar for this, Athena? Do you remember? For Chosen or for Precious? Oh, yeah. I think she might have. I, yeah. I um, Maybe I could get Jack to Google it because he loves to research and he's like always on that stuff. I'm pretty um, sure she did, but I'm not. Gabby, um, I'm trying to think of her last name, but I, I actually, either she was nominated or she won. Yeah, I know she was nominated, but I can't remember whether she won. Um, okay, The Color Purple, Oprah Winfrey, oh my goodness. Um, 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 Whoopi Goldberg, um, Oprah Winfrey's character is a victim of incest as a child, has several children by her abuser. Very good movie, but very hard movie. Another big trigger warning for that one. The Accused with Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster is sexually assaulted by a group of men and then is treated horribly by the justice system as she basically has her entire character and life put on trial as she um, accuses these men of the crime that they committed. Okay. Let's talk about the videos. Um, I think now you know Smackintosh. <laughs> Do they no. call it that? Um, that's the name of their of the channel, Smackintosh. Um, that's the name of the YouTube channel. And um, it is a YouTube channel that is uh, regarding healing from narcissistic abuse. And it is very, very, very informative. There are tons of videos on all different topics. It's a husband and wife team. And they even delve in to, like, scripture and how... God even has healthy boundaries against narcissists. I mean, wow. like it's it's layers and layers and layers and layers of reasons why you need to choose to be healthy and separate yourself from people who are soul sucking, manipulative and destroying and cannibalistic. I mean, talk about a validating YouTube channel, you guys. Smackintosh, very validating. If you have lived through any type of manipulative, um, sociopathic, psychopathic, narcissistic, malignant personality disordered situation, Smackintosh. You will be so validated and feel so built up. And, and it's not YouTube videos the way Bobby and I look at you and talk to you with our faces. These are all screen shares with words on them and pictures on them with a voiceover. And so it's, which is a lot less triggering. Bobby and I looking at you and talking with you face to face can be more triggering, especially if you're trying to multitask. But for some reason, if someone's face isn't on the screen and you can just read the words and listen to their voice, it's almost therapeutic in a way. So if you want to feel validated, go check out their YouTube channel because it's amazing. Okay. I just wondered if that was a play on their names or something, Smack and Tosh, because it makes me want to, you know, Evicts that smack. 
Maybe. I honestly don't. I never even, I never even asked like if there is like a reason behind their name or whatever. Like I never okay. looked into it that way, but, <laughs> but it's an excellent channel and I agree with you. <laughs> okay. The next one we've talked about him before and, and we, we just love Richard Grannon's work. Um, the Spartan life coach on YouTube. If you click through that link, you'll go right to his homepage on YouTube. Just excellent, excellent, excellent material, straightforward, blunt, um, he does not beat around the bush. He is fiercely on the side of all victims. And he talks about narcissistic abuse. He talks about complex post-traumatic stress disorder. He talks about all the things having to do with trauma recovery. And he has your back. He does not pussyfoot around at all. And you can see his dog in the videos too. Max. Max, yes. Maxi, Maxi. Um, these next one, two, three, I think next eight or so are all TED Talks. And the first one is Eleanor Longden, The Voices in My Head. She is um, oh, schizophrenic, is that right? Yes, she's schizophrenic and she talks about the first day she, the, the she is so eloquently spoken and so just, she's brilliant. She's beyond brilliant. This, this TED talk will validate anyone out there living with any type of mental illness. You don't have to be living with schizophrenia or disassociative identity disorder or anything like that, or to even have had hallucinations of any kind to appreciate the art that is this TED talk. She's, she's just phenomenal, this, this woman. I, I highly recommend that TED Talk. It's amazing. Um, and then the next one, I'm not familiar with at all. Sasha Joseph Newlinger. Yes. Okay. So Sasha is a guy, you guys. Sasha is a guy who um, has made a full, he has directed a full length film, a documentary called that, uh, rewind fast forward to rewind or rewind fast rewind fast forward rewind oh gosh now i'm now i'm feeling terrible that i don't remember the exact name of his film anyway he was um he was sexually abused as a child by an uncle and a cousin i believe or an uncle and an uncle and a sibling perhaps an uncle and a brother and he goes back and watches hundreds of hours of home videos and watches his abusers the way they interact with him on home video and yet he also and he's he's actually testified against his abusers um, he had he did this TEDx talk in Bozeman Montana and he talks about how trauma itself cannot be undone, but the choice is ours on how it is that we choose to deal with the trauma that we've been through. Are we going to take an act? I love that. Yes, oh my gosh, it's so empowering. Take your power back, survivors, you deserve it. Um, he talks about how as survivors, we have a choice. We can choose to, to play an active role in our recovery or we can choose to sit back and let life happen to us. And I don't want to minimize anything that you've been through if you're listening or watching this right now, because I know that sometimes it might feel that there is no choice, that choices are not up to you. In fact, you might even find yourself uttering the words, I don't have a choice. Many of the choices in my life are not up to me. I'm not the one making choices. But we want to support you and encourage you to find ways that you can play an active role in your recovery journey so that you can take your power back and take your life back now that you're an adult and you can make choices, choose to do life differently, choose to do recovery differently, choose to do relationships differently, choose to do everything different the way that you would have it be done, the way that supports you, the way that serves you, the way that causes you to feel joy and peace. And you deserve that. You deserve it. We all deserve it. So um, great TED Talk by Sasha Joseph Newlinger. Um, he was actually just here in Hawaii 
um, doing some speaking engagements and I missed him. So I messaged him and told him that I wanted to interview him on our YouTube channel and I haven't heard back from him yet. So if you're a praying person, pray that he will get back to me because I would love to interview him. He's doing some great things in the male survivor community and it would just be awesome um, to, to interview him and, and just hear his heart for survivors. I think it would really encourage our, our men out there who are, who are so brave and they're fighting this battle and, and really wanting to, to speak up and advocate for others and themselves. Um, and the next one, Athena, Johan Hari, everything you think you know about addiction is wrong. Yes. Um, I don't want to do it. I don't want to give a spoiler alert, you guys. Um, because if I tell you what the TED Talk is about, it will sort of ruin the way the whole TED Talk unfolds. Ah. And it unfolds into something so beautiful. And there's almost like a punchline. Like, you go down this journey with him. I love speakers that do this. Like, they lead you down this path of where you're literally sucked into the story they're telling and you can you can feel everything that the, the speaker is feeling and you're you, we all we all have our own assumptions as to why people um, numb their pain and we all have our own opinions about um, whether or not addiction is a disease that's passed down um, through our DNA or whether it's a choice or, or whatever we all have our our there there are presuppositions and there are predisposed sort of like like we have our own mind made up um, in a lot of ways right but he approaches this talk in a way that is so beautiful and he he's brilliant and the way that he describes the the experiments the science experiments and everything else and and the way it plays out um, in the real world versus the science experiment um, I don't want to I don't want to spoil it for you but it's only it's only 20 minutes of your time 15 to 20 minutes I I highly recommend clicking on that link Johan Hari everything you know about addiction is wrong um, and it really validates everything that Bobby and I have been talking about for two straight years um, every moment we have breath in our lungs and for the last year and a half, almost two years on this YouTube channel. So, Yay. um, yeah, it's just, it's extremely validating you guys. And, and you guys all know that there is more of, a, we've mentioned this before and I'll say it again. There's more of a connection to drug and alcohol addiction. There's more of a connection to childhood sexual abuse addiction and childhood sexual abuse have more of a connection than, mm -hmm than anything else. Yep, than anybody so. ever gives credit. Yeah. Um, Leslie Morgan Steiner, why domestic violence victims don't leave? This is the last one on the list that I'm not familiar with, Athena. Awesome, okay. So um, again, I don't wanna spoil this one, but there is, in fact, there was another, oh, you know what? There was Jake something, I, I sent it to you, and it's not on here, it's not on the list. Um, oh. How, um, how domestic violence and like abuse isn't, isn't a woman's issue, it's a man issue. Okay, uh -oh. I missed um, it. Dang it, okay, we'll, we'll add it later. Ones, yeah, these ones are, they're in tandem with one another. It just talks about how, uh, I don't want to spoil it. It's a good one, you guys. Click on the link. Leslie Morgan Steiner, Why Domestic Violence Domestic Violence Victims Don't Leave. There's, there's a lot going on in rape culture out there, a lot of victim blaming that goes on, you guys, and all the way from, well, what were you wearing to why didn't you report it sooner, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a lot of, of conversations that go on regarding gender bias and and the way things that are, they sort of are very emasculating towards our male survivor community. And he sort of turns the tables on all of that and really starts sharing as a man what it's like to not only be a survivor of certain things, but to be a secondary survivor and to have mothers and sisters and, and people in his life and how he, uh, anyway, this particular TED talk with Leslie Morgan Steiner and his are both 
I mean, they're not just about domestic violence. So yes, I don't want to spoil it though. I can't say anything without spoiling it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. The next one, Nadine Burke Harris, how childhood trauma affects health across a lifetime. Um, Nadine Burke Harris is um, one of the front brothers in the ACEs movement, adverse childhood experience. And they have done incredible studies that show that people who have trauma in their childhood experience health problems throughout their life. Um, excellent information, again, recaps a lot of what Athena and I have talked about, about autoimmune disorders, ways that it changes your brain, how childhood trauma impacts and changes our bodies. Um, then two by Brene Brown, Listening to Shame and the Power of Vulnerability. Awesome stuff. I love Brene Brown. Brown, Brene Brown. There we go. Uh, she just she just wrote the book on shame. And she brought it into the forefront and she made it a topic of conversation. And as survivors, we need to be a part of that conversation and understand shame and understand how vulnerability will help us heal. And the last one is our dear friend, Don't Run Baby Girl, is her Twitter handle. And her name is Jody Ortega. And this is her TEDx talk, Healing Thrives in Conversation. Um, and so I really encourage you to click on that one. It is a must watch because she is someone who's in our community. We can relate to her. We know her. She does awesome stuff. And then podcasts. Um, the Grass Gets Greener with Melissa Wilson. Excellent, excellent interviews with people who um, she started out focusing a lot on childhood bullying because that was her experience, but she has branched out into so many more aspects of recovery from trauma. And um, she just does some excellent interviews and you want to listen to some of those. Audio Rising podcast. Um, I think this is a friend of Matt's. Yes? I believe so. Okay. And so he's got some excellent podcasts out there. I took a look at the page today um, talking about recovery and trauma and um, how you can rise above and recover. Um, Guy McPherson is a psychologist who works um, in the trauma recovery field and he puts out a podcast um, from trauma therapists. So he interviews trauma therapists in the work that they do. And then our very own Surviving My Past, Matt Pappas puts out a brand new podcast that we are thrilled to have his voice um, out there in the universe with us. And you should follow that link and give it a listen and subscribe. Yay. Yay is right. Um, you guys, I'm so happy that we've had an opportunity to, to support a lot of our survivors that are here as a part of our community all the time, week after week after week. And um, as you guys know, um, Matt at Surviving My Past, um, he has been with us now for a couple of months. He's been writing this blog surviving my past and he's been published on the good men project he's been published on stigma fighters he's been published on this is what mental illness looks like um, he's been he's been I I want to say he got published on psych central but I honestly don't know I think I'm misspeaking I don't think it was psych central he has at surviving my past.net he has a, a link where you can see him on all if you hover it'll say you can see me published on all these awesome websites. So um, he has asked how he can um, sponsor a episode of Trauma Recovery University and Melissa Wilson has actually asked how she can sponsor an episode. So we're working on ways behind the scenes to how, how it is that we can uh, open up the work that we're doing with survivors in a way that is accessible 
to where we can have sponsors. We're, we're going to be having this ebook come out, which is a fundraiser for our event. We do have the event coming up in November, which is going to be uh, what's going to be announced. We don't have any more actual details yet. I have somebody working behind the scenes with me on that. But you guys, just to support our survivor community and encourage them in their blog writing, Phoenix writes an excellent blog. Um, go check that blog out as well. Um, Bobby has been featured on Psych Central. Rachel in the OC, the, the one who founded Sex Abuse Chat with Bobby Parrish, she has a blog that focuses a lot on um, finding your voice, like finding your voice. She has a, um, a quote where she always talks about to, you need to write what scares you. You need to write it for you. And if people wanted you to write fondly of them, they should have treated you better. Like she just really en encourages people to find their voice and to write the things that they're scared to write because you will be set free when you find your voice. So, um, but Bobby has been featured on her blog quite a bit. And um, Stigma Fighters is another blog and they have an anthology out. And then one um, that we mentioned last week is Brie Bonche put out an anthology called I Am Free. And it's all stories on narcissistic abuse. And you guys, the very first annual Narcissistic Abuse Awareness Day is uh, coming up on June 1st. And Jody Amen has a YouTube channel, you guys. And it, I believe it's just youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Jody Amen, J O D I A M A N. She has tons of videos on OCD, dissociation, anxiety. Her videos have helped me a lot in recovering from childhood sexual abuse and exploitation and just all kinds of different things. Um, so I highly recommend that as well, even though it wasn't on the one page, but I would love for you guys to go click and check that out. And we also got to interview her on this channel. So um, yeah, I think we're going to transition um, our broadcast over to the portion of the broadcast where we welcome new people that have never been here before and invite them to join our community. Uh, whether it's by coming into one of our secret safe support communities that we have hosted over on Facebook or um, just let them know how they can contact us on email or Twitter. Um, so if that is you and you're brand new, stick around for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, you guys, thank you for being here. We love you. You are the reason we show up every single week. So thank you. Bobby, did you have anything you wanted to say to everyone before we transition over to um, the next portion of our broadcast? No, I can't think of anything other than thank you for sharing this hour with us or this hour in 10 minutes. And um, we look forward to seeing you again next week or in another episode. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Okay. Let's screen share. Um, so if you guys are not familiar, since you're sticking around for this portion of the broadcast, every single week, Bobby and I have two screen shares, ways that you can contact us and connect with us, and then ways you can join our community. So um, you can also find ways to join our community in the About section of our YouTube channel or over on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash trauma recovery university. And Bobby is going to do a screen share right now to welcome you into our community. Thanks for sticking around. Yay! Okay. Yay. So this, these are ways to contact us. You can connect with Athena and I on Twitter. That's right there in the middle. Um, because Twitter is one of the primary ways that we communicate with our peeps. Twitter and Facebook. So if you want to follow us on Twitter, I am Bobby L. Parrish. Athena is Athena Moberg. And Trauma Recovery University is Trauma Recovery U. If you would like to email us, you can email me at bobbylparish at gmail.com. You can email Athena at Athena Moberg Speaking at gmail.com. And you can email us together at our joint email, no more shame project at gmail.com. You can see if you look over here on the right hand side, um, you can see all of our replays our videos on YouTube, on Roku TV, and on Google Plus. Just do a search for Trauma Recovery University and they will, the channel will pop right up for you to be able to see. 
I'm gonna make this bigger and go here. If you'd like to connect with us on Facebook, and this is gonna be important when I talk about it on the next slide, you can find Trauma Recovery University. There's our professional page. My personal professional page is also, is Bobby Parish Coaching and Consulting. And then my, <laughs> a tongue tripping over myself tonight, my personal page is Bobby Parish. Professional page is Bobby Parish Coaching and Consulting. Athena's professional page is Athena Moberg Speaking. And her personal page is Dawn Athena Moberg. So as we remember about the Facebook, we'll go over here to our last screen share that talks about how you can join us in our Twitter chats and Facebook groups. Our Facebook groups have really started booming lately. Yeah. So um, we'll talk for a minute about how you can, in a minute, on how you can get plugged into those. But first, let's talk about the Twitter chats. We have three each week. The first one is Monday, and that's at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. in the UK. And the hashtag is CSAQT, which stands for Child Sexual Abuse Question Time. And then the second one is what you're watching or listening to right now, if you're here live, the hashtag is no more shame. The time is at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern, and 2 o'clock Tuesday mornings if you're in the UK. And then the original chat that started everything off is Tuesday evening. The hashtag is sex abuse chat. It's at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern, and that is Wednesday at two o'clock in the morning for those who are in the UK. Ooh, I made it really big. Okay, let's talk about Facebook and how to get into our Facebook groups. This is by far the easiest way and we ask that you use this way because um, like I just mentioned, people were getting um, probably easily about 10 requests a week to join in the Facebook support groups. And this is, the easiest way for us to get people plugged in. Um, other things like emailing, um, sending us messages on our professional pages, um, sending us a tweet, those are just hard, they're harder for us to keep track of. Um, and for some reason, Facebook is just really buggy lately. Oh, about. Busy. So mad. Oh my gosh, it makes me mad. With, withholding messages. I got a message from this. I felt so bad, this poor woman. And she had been messaging me. This was probably the ninth time she had messaged me saying, I'd like to heal and safe community. And when I popped up, the message finally showed up and I looked at it. I could see all eight prior attempts. Like each one was like a week. Is Back. that the one? Is that the one that I finally responded to as well today, or no? No, uh -uh. this was oh, another one. Different yes, one. Facebook. <laughs> what are you doing? So, um, forgive us, you guys. So, if you follow this method, it's the best, and know that we are. We would never ignore you. So, if you're not getting a response to your message, chances are the messages are not getting through. Um, we ask that you like the Trauma Recovery University Facebook page. Send us friend requests and please send them to both of us because we're in two different time zones with two different schedules and we don't sometimes know um, when we can get to Facebook. So it might be one or the other of us first. Well, and because yeah, Bobby, Bobby is five hours ahead of me. So like earlier on in the day, but then there are some days that are days where I'm not even on social because I'm doing different stuff. And likewise for Bobby, like we, 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 we sort of go back and forth. Like some days we're on more and some days. So please, as this says, as Bobby just mentioned, always friend both of us, always message both of us after we accept your friend request so that one of us can get to you. And we love that you guys are being patient. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks to get plugged in, but we will do the best we can to, to fix that process over time. 
after you have ex we have accepted your friend request we ask that you send us a message on facebook that says i'd like to heal and save community or something like that and then we will respond to you we'll ask you some questions if we don't already know you from twitter or facebook or having met you at a live event and the reason that we do that is trying to avoid letting people into the group that are predators or who would otherwise take advantage of our group members because your safety is of paramount importance to us. So please don't be offended if we ask you some questions. Um, the purpose is to make sure that you're a good fit. And after we're assured of that, we will let you into one of the support groups and then you can take advantage of all the awesomeness that they have to offer. Yay! Yay! I did have someone um, last week get kind of upset with me for asking them questions. So um, they, like, they messaged me saying, I've been, trying, I've been trying to connect with you. First it was, I've been trying to connect with you. I give up, I give up, forget this. And then it was like, they messaged again saying like, it's been weeks like what's the deal and then I, I said oh it's nice to meet you I apologize for um, the delay <laughs> or whatever you know like Facebook does its thing or like you know we have life like I had a doctor's appointment last week and I've been in a fair amount of pain since Tuesday so like thanks for your patience but anyway I, I proceeded to welcome her greet her, thank her for her patience, and communicate with her. And then I asked her the normal questions that I normally ask during our vetting process. And it popped up a little thing that said um, that it was read. Like it said, read at, like, you know how Facebook does that thing where it tells you if someone reads it. Um, but then, like, no response. And, like, I had, like, it was, like, the sixth message I had received, and I had not gotten them previously. So I was, like, and then so I messaged saying, you know, um, you know, please forgive, the, you know, the questions are part of our vetting process. And I sort of got, they sort of went off on me. Like, you know, you guys say that you're a healing community and whatever and just all this, like, sort of nonsense. And, you guys, this is a healing community. But guess what? Like, in order for people to heal in safety, which is what we do, we have to determine personally what is safe. And so we have a vetting process. And our vetting process has um, never failed us in um, two years. And we have several groups set up that are successful, awesome, amazing healing groups filled with survivors from all over the globe healing and safety away from predators and we would love to just invite you in to join us in that so your patience is appreciated and um, yeah your patience is appreciated and mutual respect or professional courtesy or whatever you want to call it is appreciated as well because we're just doing our jobs so <laughs> Bobby did you have any um, any comments on that or similar experiences or oh yeah you know I get people who blast me for how long it takes or the fact that I didn't respond to their message when I never saw their message because Facebook did let me see their message um, <laughs> but you know we are doing our best we're bringing more we're bringing volunteers on to help us with more and more things so um, eventually it'll all get smoothed out and until then we're doing the best we can so yep all we can do is our best. Yeah. So as we approach the end of the month of May, yay, I'm looking at my calendar. <laughs> we're almost ready to slide into summer. Yes. And in June, we're going to do some um, awesome topics like sexual orientation and gender orientation. Um, June is Pride Month for the United States. It's and also are... PTSD. It's also PTSD Awareness Month. So June's going to be ah. packed with, uh, packed with um, discussions about PTSD, gender preference, sexual orientation, um, and yeah, Pride Month and PTSD Month. And this is when we were supposed to do that fundraiser. Remember when we got like 
back like a year or so ago, someone offered to help us um, put together a fundraiser. Anyway, we're not, uh, we haven't filed our articles of incorporation yet to become a 501c3, you guys. So just be thinking of us as we sort of transition and move into sort of a hybrid model of like part of our business is for profit and then part of our business will be nonprofit. And um, we're going to be setting up, I have someone helping me behind the scenes um, to set up a Patreon account for our YouTube channel. We're officially YouTube partners. We decided against, for those of you that have sort of been in on the whole like discussion about um, YouTube partnership and um, getting offered sort of, uh, what is that called? Um, network, YouTube network um, sponsorship. So um, we're just gonna stick with being a YouTube partner and move forward in that direction. Uh, we're gonna be having some fundraisers. We have an event coming up in November on Veterans Day weekend, but as Bobby was just mentioning a moment ago, uh, Pride Month and PTSD Awareness Month are huge in the survivor community. In fact, I would probably be willing to bet that a high 90 percentile of the survivor community either addresses, has addressed, lives with, or has lived with something on one of the two topics, or one of the four one of the three topics, either they've, they have questions with or have addressed some sexual orientation, um, perhaps um, um, family members or, or whatever have questioned their, whether they are bisexual or homosexual. Um, there's also um, a lot of our survivor community, as we're gonna be talking a different week about gender preference and, and what that all entails. And then a lot of the survivor community deals with either PTSD or complex PTSD, which we did a video last year about that as well, or maybe it was two years ago. I can't remember. But big, big, big stuff, Bobby. These are big topics. So the month of June is already like basically planned out. Yeah, big topics, but important. And you and I have never shied away from the important stuff, even if it's controversial, so there we will be yeah we always, we're not afraid to talk about the hard stuff you guys we know that um the hard topics need to be talked about and we try to handle them with as much gentleness and reverence as possible um, handle them respectfully with the with the respect they deserve every topic deserves to be discussed and um this is obviously our YouTube channel, so you'll be hearing our opinions, but we do love to come to you with a sort of spin-free um, environment. Like, we're not gonna be putting any type of controversial spin on anything just to stir the pots out there. Like, we're just gonna be coming to you with great educational resources and personal experiences. That's what this YouTube channel is about for you, the adult survivor of child abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse. So we value you. We appreciate you, as always, and we love bringing you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. Um, this is Bobby Parrish, and I'm Athena Moberg, and we can't wait to see you um, in one of our secret support groups or over on Twitter or right here next week, Monday, any Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. See you later, everybody.